Hey everybody, Chris here from It's Mead Man, and question. Have you ever loaded your build plate with multiple prints knowing that they could easily be separate jobs, but you'd rather just have your printer to just keep constantly running instead of starting a new print over and over? Then at the end, you're left with a bunch of wasted filament and a giant pile of purge poop, and not to mention your printer has been running even longer because you decided to load your build plate. If you've ever wished there's a better way to save time and save on filament waste, well, you're in luck because today I'm going to show you a way that you can save time and filament. So I've got two prints here, one that I've done a conventional way and just loaded my build plate and hit print. And it took 11 hours and it created a nice pile of poop. And I have another print using a simple setting that cuts down time significantly while reducing the filament waste just to two color changes. So stick around and I'm going to walk you through these simple steps to be able to tweak Bamboo Studio to be able to save you time and filament. <laughs> So the holiday season is coming up and my wife had a brilliant idea to have a little tree in one of our rooms of our house, but not just any tree. She wanted it to be completely themed and here's the best part. She wanted it to be Super Mario themed. <sighs> I love my wife. Of course, I'm like always down to be printing a super nerdy project and Recently, all of my printers have been super busy printing all of these Super Mario themed ornaments for the tree. And before you even ask, I am going to go ahead and put all of the links to the models that I'm printing currently down below. And I got them all from Maker World, which the great part about that is that they're all already optimized for bamboo printers. And keep in mind that you don't need to have a bamboo printer to be able to print for Maker World either. Anyone can just print the files, you just have an extra option on there to be able to import it directly in Bamboo Studio if you have a bamboo printer. One of the models that I've been working on is this Cheap Cheap file. So if you're not familiar with Cheap Cheap, it's the fish that jumps and swims around in Super Mario. And I know personally I've died to this stupid fish multiple times in my life, but that's that's besides the fact. Now when we're talking about the ornament, a lot of the parts are pretty straightforward. And that's what's really great about this specific file because they're already separated by color. So you don't really need an AMS except for the pupils. It is a multicolor print, but you could print it in one color and it'll still look pretty good. But since I do have an AMS, I wanted to load my plate as much as I can in the most efficient way possible. And here's why. I am not always hovering over my 3D printers. And some of these prints on this file are short, like less than an hour or so. And that's great, but I can't get back to another print for six to eight hours because of, you know, life. And I needed to optimize these prints to make fewer build plates to get the most out of every single print. And at first, I was just putting two separate models on the build plates and just let the AMS do its job and go between color changes every single layer. And that also meant it created a purge tower and a lot of wasted poop. Like, a lot for just these two models. And this was not the most ideal, and I needed to reduce my time and save more filament. And so I decided to use something called Print Sequence. It's an awesome little setting, and if you're not familiar with it, the gist of it basically is it lets you print a fully complete model on one build plate before moving to the next printed model. Now, this is a real game changer because it eliminates that back and forth between the models. And between those times of going back and forth, that can really rack up time. Now, an important thing to note is this method really works best when you're dealing with single colored models. And in my case, this is perfect because these cheap, cheap bodies are the exact same file. I just needed two different colors. I needed one in red and I needed one in green. So let's go ahead and jump into Bamboo Studio so I can show you how all of this works when using the print sequence settings. And like I mentioned earlier, I got this model from Maker World. And one of the great things about their files is when you import them, most of the artists organize each plate by color. And that makes a project like this so much easier. 
For this particular model, there are seven build plates. That's right, seven. Minus the plate of pupils, which are multicolor prints. And I'm going to leave this plate alone because it's already optimized and doesn't take that long to print anyway. Now, the white build plate is another build plate that's completely full, and it's a long print job. So I'm not going to be touching this one either. But for the rest of these plates, there's room to combine and reduce print jobs. By organizing things a little differently, I can take this project from seven build plates down to just four. Let's take a closer look at the cheap, cheap fish bodies first. These are identical prints, but I need them in red and I need them in green. Now, if I combine both of these build plates, the default setting of the slicer automatically adds a purge tower. And that's what I was originally doing. But let me tell you, I'm not happy with this solution because of the amount of filament waste. Not only that, but the print time just skyrockets. With a purge tower, it takes 11 hours and 40 minutes to print both build plates on the same plate. But if I print each build plate separately, it's just an hour and 53 minutes per plate. Now, I can already hear some of you might be saying, why not just print them one at a time to save your time and your filament? And yeah, that's a valid option. But here's the thing. I don't always have the time to run back and forth to start new print projects. Life just, it gets busy. And I'd rather have my printers working smarter, not harder. So I can keep cranking out prints while focusing on other things. For me, the real problem isn't the total print time, it's the amount of downtime between each print. I want my printers running continuously when I've got big print projects like this. I really don't want them to just sit around idle waiting for me to start the next job. And that's really where print sequence comes in and it's, it's a total game changer for you to be able to optimize your workflow. So first, let me show you how to set up a print sequence, then I'll walk you through how to take it a step further and optimize your sequences for even better results. So let's start by creating a new build plate. I'll copy over one of the cheap, cheap fish bodies, then duplicate it so we have two on the same plate. Now, I'll change the filament color of one of the bodies to green. And here's a quick tip. If you're using Bamboo Studio, you can quickly change between filament slots by pressing the corresponding number on your keyboard. So for example, in my setup, slot seven is green. So all I need to do is hit the number seven and it automatically updates the model to use that filament color. This is just super handy. Once I've set the second model to green, you'll notice something right away. Bamboo Studio automatically adds a purge tower on the build plate. That's the default behavior for multicolor prints. Now we could hit print at this point, but this method will swap filaments every single layer, creating a ton of waste. And that's not what we want here. So instead, we use print sequence. To set this up, all you do is click on the build plate settings icon. Under the print sequence dropdown, choose by object, then hit OK. You'll immediately notice that the purge tower disappears. Now the slicer is set to print one object completely before moving on to the next one. But if you notice, there's an error. If you look at the bottom right corner of your screen, you'll see that collisions are detected. This happens because the two models are too close together. When using print sequence, the models need to be spaced far enough apart to ensure the print head doesn't collide with an already printed object. If your model is too tall, this method won't work, and the slicer will throw out an error message letting you know. It's best suited for smaller, similar height models, like in this case, the cheap, cheap bodies. To fix the collision error, simply click on the model and move it away until the buffer zone is no longer overlapping. You'll know you're good when the error disappears. So now that we've set a basic print sequence, let's talk about how to optimize this to get even better results. Because the key here is understanding that every model has a safety margin around it. And this is a good thing because it prevents the nozzle from bumping into already printed parts, which could knock them off the build plate or even damage your printer. But those margins can limit how many models you can fit on a single build plate. So for example, I want to print three cheap, cheap fish bodies in each color, red and green. 
If I try to place all six models on the build plate as separate objects, the safety margins will make it impossible for them all to fit. But here's where we can get a little creative. Instead of treating each model as an individual object, we can combine the models by color. To do this, all we have to do is select all of the green models, then right click on them and you'll get the drop down menu, and then choose Merge. This combines them into a single object as far as the slicer is concerned. Then we just have to repeat this for the red models as well. When merging your files, it's important to think about the layout. For this project, I'm arranging them in a straight line, then merging them. This keeps things simple and ensures that the red and green sections stay separate and they're easy to manage. By merging the models of the same color, we can trick the slicer into treating them as two objects, red and green, even though they are multiple models. This allows us to maximize the efficiency of our build plate while still keeping everything organized. Now, if we take a closer look at the two models, you'll notice that their safety margins are not overlapping, but we're still getting an error at the bottom right corner of the screen. This is where we need to think about how the printer will move and how potential collisions could happen. To solve this, it's all about arrangement. Instead of having the model staggered from front to back, we want each color grouped together in its own section from the front of the plate to the back of the plate. And here's how we do that. All we need to do is select both models and rotate them 90 degrees. Now the red models are in the front of the plate and the green models are in the back of the plate. Immediately, the error disappears. This arrangement significantly reduces the chance of the print head colliding with completed 3D prints. When we slice the build plate, we can go through the timeline and we can see the front of the build plate prints first followed by the back of the plate, which are the green models. This ensures that each section is printed one at a time and avoiding any accidental collisions. And here's where the real cost savings kicks in. By using this method, we've reduced the number of filament changes to two, just two, compared to the other conventional method that required 264 color changes. Now, if you've done any multicolor printing, you know how much time those filament swaps add. For this project, the traditional way took 11 hours and 38 minutes with all of that wasted filament. With print sequence, it took just three hours and 32 minutes. Now that is a massive time savings, but we're not done. You can take this a step further. Let's say we're working with more than two colors. By following the exact same steps, you can arrange three colored models on the build plate and merge them together by each color. The slicer will handle them like before, and you'll still benefit from reduced collisions and fewer filament changes. I recommend when doing this, have shorter models in the front of the build plate and the taller ones in the back. Using this approach, I was able to fit three different colored models onto a single print job, which only took two hours. That's combining three print jobs into one with only four color changes. For this particular project, we started with seven build plates and by optimizing with print sequence, we reduced that down to four. That's three fewer jobs to worry about. Now, I want to clarify that this method doesn't always save time on the clock. But in some cases, the print time might be about the same as printing the individual jobs. Just remember, the real benefit here is efficiency. Your printer keeps running without the need to keep going and start a new job every single time it finishes, which means you can get more done and you can focus on other things. And one other thing that's definitely worth thinking about is the time you waste in between each print job. Even if I'm standing right next to my printer when it finishes, which, let's be honest, I never am, it still takes a few minutes to cool down, remove the print, place the print bed back on the printer, then head over to my printer, open up the sliced files or slice new files if I haven't already done it yet, and then once that's all done, I have to send it to the printer and then just verify that it started correctly. I mean, all together, that easily takes me about 10 minutes. Now, I probably could move faster, 
but in all reality, that's about how long it takes me. And all of that is time that I could be spending on something else. When you add all of that together to your print time, it becomes another factor that you really need to consider. That's why minimizing the number of build plates and print jobs is so valuable. Well, especially to me. Removing the amount of times I have to start and stop and just let my printer keep running, that's where this really shines. And for those of you curious about the exact breakdown of time and filament savings, I've created a chart that shows you all of the details. Now, this chart specifically covers the print that I'm showing you here, this cheap, cheap fish body. But these principles of how it can save you time and money applies to just about any print. So if you'd like to see these tutorials where I'm diving deeper into Bamboo Studio, let me know in the comments. And as always, I wish you a great day, and I'll go ahead and see you in this next video right here.